Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and welcome to our channel today. I appreciate y'all being here. And if you're new to the channel, if you're finding us for the very first time, welcome. Hey, it's good to have you. And as a quick reminder, you know, my focus, you know, my mission here in the channel is I want to be able to provide as much information as I can to as many people as I can, you know, across all regions. And the best way I can do that is when you choose to subscribe to the channel, when you choose to like the videos, when you choose to offer comments, when you choose to share the information with friends, associates, and colleagues. So if you've not yet done so, you know, please hit that subscribe button. And then for additional ways, you can learn more, more about me and my company and how we can help take your business to that next level. You know, be sure to check out those links below. And so with that said, let's get into our topic here today. And it's strategies to motivate your gym sales team. Strategies to motivate your gym sales team. I mean, we all look, work better and we're motivated, right? And, you know, the, the kind of the core job of, uh, of, uh, of management is we want to create an atmosphere that allows a motivated person to act. So I want to talk about some strategies to motivate your gym sales team. And, and you know, and I draw on this from, you know, uh, clients we work with and even personal experience and taking over other gyms. And, and many times, you know, taking over gyms and doing troubleshooting, the big difference was is how we made people feel about themselves. Okay, that was where the big improvement was made. And then, you know, the processes, once you get that fixed, that's kind of always there. And these were the things that really made the long-term difference. So strategies to motivate your gym sales team. Number one, build trust with the people on your team. Build trust. Okay, you know, certainly we want to be transparent and certainly we want to communicate and we want to provide information. But, you know, the big thing I would say is be a resource center even a servant, if you will, you know, view it like you work for them, but be a resource center for your team. You're there to help them have success because if they have success, guess what? So do you. So one of the be best things you can do, one of the easiest things we can do, you know, too often, you know, where, you know, the staff isn't motivated, it's a little more of a heavy handed approach, but build trust with your people best advice I can give you, I think, is you become a resource center for them. How can I help you? Doesn't mean we don't have, you know, policies and procedures. Don't mean we, we, we have to keep them between the lines. Yeah, I get that, okay? But in terms of keeping them motivated, I want them to feel confident and comfortable. They can come with me with anything. They say, Jim, that last person I talked to, I just felt like I, I felt really uncomfortable asking them to buy. Can you help me? And instead of getting called out, sure, I'm sit down and talk about this and let me help you. So build trust with your team. Uh, number two, you know, talk to your team, ask them, how do they like to be managed? You know, what, what some of the best situations that you worked in, how were you managed? What was that manager like? What did you like best about other managers? What did you like least about other managers? You know, find out how your people respond the best. Okay, you know, more often than not, if we give them respect and we train them, you're probably in pretty good shape. But ask them, how do they like to be managed? And give them examples. It doesn't have to be literally, how do you like to be managed? It can be, hey, what managers have you found that you work best for? Okay, and that doesn't mean you don't, you're not going to be tough necessarily because sometimes we have to kind of keep them in line uh, to an extent, right? But uh, we, we do want to put them in that best situa uh, situation to have success. Um, Number three, understand, we're talking about your team, understand what their personal and professional goals are. Do you understand their goals? What kind of goals do they have personally? What kind of goals do they have professionally? Why are these goals important? See, this is the same thing. We do it with the customer when they come in. What kind of goals do you have, Mary? I want to lose 20 pounds. Great. Why are those goals important? Well, my doctor told me if I don't lose the 20 pounds, I'm going on medication. Okay, there we go. Okay. Same thing with our staff. Understand what their goals are, why those goals are important. This is going to allow you to be more uh, successful in communicating and managing and putting them in situations where they can have success. Number four, make sure we are covering the basics. You know, we're trying to motivate our staff. And if we can keep our staff on course with the basic fundamentals of this, we don't want them going out and being kind of a wild card and doing their own thing. None of this, well, Jim, here's how I do it. No, here's how we do it. Okay, we need to bring them in. But here's how we handle a phone inquiry. Here's how we handle an email. Here's how we handle a customer when they come in. Here's how we do a membership presentation. Here's how we get referrals. Here's how we do the second sale. Uh, here's how we do retail. Here's 
the CRM. You know, make sure they know the basics of how this is done. Because one of the things I found to be true, if a person's got a good attitude and they'll follow the proper process, you'll have success. And partially you have success because it's a great industry. I mean, there's nobody on the planet that doesn't want to look better, feel better, or live longer. Okay, that's everybody. Okay, and so it's a great product. Make sure we follow the basics. Don't just you know assume it's all going to sell itself. There's a certain fundamental to it. Uh, number five. This one I find more commonly than I should, but I do find it is uh, you know strategies to motivate your sales team. Make sure you have daily, weekly, and monthly goals. It's uh, it's always fascinating still to me. You know when I get on a call with somebody and I ask them, hey, what's the goal for the month? Well, we really don't have one. You have to have one every day, every week, every month. You know, for, for membership sales, for you know, cash you're bringing in, for recurring fees that you're signing up. And because what you want to do is take those goals, you're going to have projections. Okay, we're projecting 80% of that goal, 105% of that goal, whatever it is. And we want to manage based on those objectives. I mean, not only is this good management, this is, a, this is how we motivate our staff because now we're clear. Here's what needs to be done. Here's what needs to be done here. But set daily, weekly, and monthly goals. Again, fascinating still to me how many folks don't do that. Number six, figure out where the issues lie. You know, if the person's not motivated, where are the issues here? Okay. You know, maybe they're focused. They're so worried about, you know, missing the sale that that's what they do. Okay, maybe they've not memorized the material, so they're free to be themselves. Okay, uh, maybe they're distracted. Maybe they have. Yeah, you know, I remember when this is when I, I became good at it. Okay, and um, and we would go through all this and what what's the one thing I need to do to go to a whole new level? And what we kind of found, and I was like 21 at the time, and what I found was that say people that were over 50 that came in my closing percentage dropped significantly, okay? And so you stayed under 50, doing well, you get over that, I didn't do quite as well, okay? And so how do we fix that? So okay, there was an issue, how do we address it? And so, you know, we addressed it, and all of a sudden, oops, look how good we're doing, okay? And it changed things. So figure out where the issues lie. And I can give you, I can give you a story after story on just looking at guest registers and looking at customers and looking at sources and looking at objections. You can start to really start to understand really what's starting to happen. And, and with that said, let me just recommend for you folks, you know, we're offering a free 45 minute strategy session. You guys want to click that link below. Happy to chat with you for 45 minutes and, and talk about kind of what's working, what's not working, and maybe how we can help figure out where the issues are and how you can fix some of those. Um, number seven, get, give great rewards. Reward people, reward them. Okay, I know my favorite reward, the simplest, the easiest, didn't cost a penny, was thank you. Thank you for that sale. I appreciate it. Thank you. Regardless of circumstances, regardless of what's going on, thank you for that sale. Every single time. But have rewards, have contests, have events. Do it all the time. You know, we used to have contests and rewards all the time. And at the end of the month, we'd have a, a big uh, celebration at the club that was a top producer. And I'd roll out the red carpet. I had, you know, the skylight in the sky. I had the podium and the microphone up front. And we're giving out awards and letting them come up and say thanks and all that. You know, celebrate this. Celebrate it. And then last on my list on uh, strategies to motivate your sales team, communicate, communicate, communicate. I, I can't stress that enough. Have good communication with your staff. Hey, what are they thinking? What are you thinking? What did you think before? Okay, you know, what are you thinking now? And, you know, one, I tell you one of the things that in terms of communication that I see missed frequently is things like maintenance in the gym, marketing. I mean, people don't know what's going on. And, and we'll just get a, a maintenance logbook up front or we'll get a communications logbook. And you can do these in real-time docs and all that as well. But we'll get a communication logbook, a marketing logbook, and here's all the equipment things that we see. Here's all the marketing that's going on. And it's updated continually. But then when, when the customer, when the customer, when the, uh, the staffer comes to work, it's one of the first things they do. They check out the maintenance logbook. Hey, I reported the lap machine was sticking. It looks like it was fixed yesterday at 2 o'clock. Great. 
Okay, or here's what's going on in marketing. Here's a referral campaign that's going on. Here's a deal of the day. Here's a weekend promo that's coming up. Oh, we're closing out this rate. You know, here's everything that's happening. So they know what's happening. Communicate. Don't leave your staff with egg on their face. So folks, uh, again, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. Appreciate you being here at the channel today. And if you've not yet done so, please hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. And uh, uh, for additional ways, you can learn more about me, learn more about my company, how we can help take your business to that next level and how you can choose to support the channel. You know, please check out those links below and we'll look forward to seeing you all in that next video.